Hello, this is my final project for the History of Photography class, um, Spooky Photography Part 2. So just a refresher of what my previous assignment was, is to learn what makes things scary and what you subject matter you can photograph that will trigger biological responses of fear. So for the first one, we have fear of death and pain. This is the most basic one where people are afraid of dying, people are afraid of being in pain. So if you can photograph something of that nature, it will be scary. And my first example of that is this photograph of a lion by Brave Atif Saeed in Pakistan. And then here we have my version of a picture that will cause fear of pain or death. Now, this picture um, is more about context and social cues that we've developed than um, a more basic example like the lion. This is more the idea of being afraid of malicious people. And this facial expression is concerning because we don't often see people make faces like that. Um, and the unfocused eyes, the dark lighting makes it seem like this person is a danger to us. So my process, I wanted to take a photo of someone that looked malicious, and I thought that it was easier to portray the fear of death and pain by a person, i.e. myself, than other methods, because I don't have access to dangerous animals like lions. Um, but the only other type of pain I could think of was a car accident, and I was thinking about it, and that sounded too difficult and dangerous to do. So um, what I did end up doing for my process is I used a tripod, I set up the camera, I focused um, generally where I was going to go stand, I had a timer, I went over to pose, um, and the timer didn't really work out, so instead I just was in arm's length of the camera and because the image has my arm out as if I was cornering someone, it ended up looking pretty okay for me to still use my hand to press the camera. It took a few tries because um, I was doing it blind, like most of my photos that I'm doing in this project, because I only have myself, um, but it ended up looking pretty good. So in post-production, I tinted the image to be blue. I have very orange lighting in my house. So a lot of these images I tinted blue. Um, and then this one I did even more blue because I wanted to look even more cold and sinister. The next one is the unknown, unpredictable, and uncanny. Um, for this one, uh, the example was this um, picture by Noel S. Oswald in Hungary, and I was very much inspired by this image. I liked the way that it was a human, but their head was kind of indistinguished, and so I did a similar thing where I did of me, or sorry, of a figure in the darkened hallway with a different kind of head than normal. Um, so this is a stuffed plushie of a Mickey Mouse face that I put in my mouth and posed. Um, so I kind of already talked about my intent, um, making it creepy, kind of like the first image we saw where the head was different and in a sinister pose in a darkened hallway. Um, so my process was I set up the camera on a tripod and I had put on the 10 second timer, made sure that the camera was already focused on the area where I wanted it to be. And then I ran over um, during the second timer and um, had the pillow in my mouth and um, posed in the hallway. In post-production, I made the texture and the clarity a lot stronger so that it had this kind of like crunchy quality, kind of like some older camera models and some like older camera quality because we also have like an intrinsic kind of weariness around things that are old. I don't know because it reminds us of death. Anyway, um, but also old things are kind of scary anyway. Next one, a social rejection and social outcast. This one talks about how we tend to other certain groups of society, um, those who are disabled, those who are of minorities in different races, those that different leaders are trying to put propaganda against. Um, so we have a lot of things like, you know, hooked nose on witches and goblins because at some point there was groups that wanted to have fear and um, rejection of 
Jewish features, of Native American features. So this is a very sensitive topic. Um, and I was having a hard time figuring out what I wanted to do for this. There, um, you, I could have done something like public speaking or um, things that, that are about the rejection day to day than just like propaganda. But I didn't find those were very scary. They were more just like a picture of fear of rejection. And it's like, anyway. But I decided to do um, a the fear of the more disabled on the side of people who harm others or harm themselves and that need help. And um, for my piece, I didn't want to do it in a negative way, but I mean, it's it's a difficult topic to go into. So forgive me if I am perpetuating stereotypes, but just know that I am more taking a photo of the stereotypes themselves was my intention and because i am presenting it in this type of format i'm hoping that my um conversation can be a little more open so anyway is the version i had before of dorothy lange this isn't quite the um social rejection that i was talking about but this is about like loneliness um, cause I, I was also having a hard time finding examples that weren't going to be perpetuating stereotypes. Um, so then mine is image. So this is a selfie of myself that I took with the camera on, um, a second timer so that I was able to pose and it was on a shorter end of exposure time, but I still had about three seconds and so I held my position and then moved my eyes back and forth so that it would catch a little bit of a blurriness. And this is pretty mild when it comes to the fear and othering of the disabled and um, mentally ill community. Um, as someone who has mental illness, um, I think it is only Hollywoodized a lot of it. But in um, media that uses mental illness as part of the horror, there is a stereotype of a tilted head, unfocused eyes, um, approaching the main character in darkness, there's like a lighting, um, and facial expressions that look more intent on either malicious behavior or an empty expression. Now, this is very similar to the danger one, as I try to mimic the look of a murderer, but again, that connection to um, other types of marginalized people is, you know, very Hollywoodized. This is just my written explanation of what I've already talked about, um, but I will say in post-production, uh, most of my focus was on the editing of the light and the saturation. Uh, I spent a lot of time making sure that my shadows weren't too dark and that my brights weren't too light, um, while still having it pretty shrouded in darkness. So I also toned down the warmth, but not too much. I still wanted it to look pretty realistic, um, whereas in my Danger of Fear of Pain or Death, um, that one was very cold and almost like... Hollywood dramatic lighting. This one I wanted to be more real because I am talking about real people, even though I am um, stereotyping them. When is unpleasant sensations? Now this one was my favorite one to photograph, um, but just a reminder, this is the photography of photographing things that you do not want to come into contact in real life. So whether it be a texture or a sound or an environment, um, it is a very effective way to create a negative reaction in your viewer, but I didn't want to go for gross. Uh, I didn't want to go for uh, gory or um, too disturbing, but I thought we'd all, we're all afraid of needles. And I have so many pins because as a seamstress that I was inspired by um, all the different sewing projects I've done where there's like just a thousand needles sticking through it. Example that I showed before with Ines Reichlich in the uh, United Kingdom of the bees under her shirt. My take where we have a bunch of needles that are very reflective of the highlights and looking down into a very tropophobic looking object at the bottom of this like cavern. So my take on the unpleasant sensations, um, I want to explore the most common fear of needles and the also as well as the fear and unpleasantness of holes or trypophobia. 
Um, so for my process, this um, took the most amount of time. This was probably about four hours to do just this piece. Um, and it put a lot of pins in the inside of one of my sweaters, um, inside out. And I held it up with a mop end. There was a, in the handle of my mop, and I put the mop on my table and put the sleeve through the hole and also had like a cross stitch um, holder. Maybe I won't mention that because that's hard to explain. Um, but just a lot of, a lot of setup for this one. And then I had a project from last semester where I did a lot of paper holes, um, and that one I called trypophobia, and I put it underneath the sleeves, and then I messed around with a lot of lighting. I wanted to really explore the different ways that the shadows could make it kind of scary. I um, used my ceiling light, turned that off, used a lamp, turned that off, used just my phone light. I ended up going with my phone light as its light went through this chair, and those are the shadows that you'll see on the image if you want to go back and look. But um, that took a lot of work. Um, in post-production, it was, I basically, because it was almost in complete darkness, uh, except for a, a faint phone light, um, I put the ISO pretty dark so that it would pick up all the details. And it made it very grainy. Um, and then in post-production, I was able to bring out all the highlights and be careful with my saturation and um, exposure because just the raw image was basically all black, which was super cool to have all that secret information when I was editing it. So feeling trapped. Um, this one is more of a specific fear that a lot of people have um, that is just a common one used in photography. Cages, um, under ice was my example of the photo. Um, I wasn't very inspired by this because um, I don't feel like I, I feel like the best imagery that you can create with this concept is with um, a lot of good props. Uh, whether you have a cage or a glass box or, like, like, I just feel like you, it's, it takes a lot more funding, but maybe I'm just not creative enough, and that's totally fine. But what it ended up doing is I do have a glass table. Now, this is the example of it being under ice um, by Turin Andre in Russia. But for mine, I have this glass table with a bunch of objects on it, and I wanted it to feel kind of claustrophobic before you even see the person underneath it. And so I have all these objects really framing the image, just kind of filling the space. And then underneath you see this ghost-like figure um, who's pretty opaque, but the reflection of the glass onto the ceiling makes it look kind of eerie. And then uh, the person is like trapped under there. So I don't know if my um, intent of making it look like a ghost trapped under there worked or if it just looks like someone who's uh, taking a photo of them under a table. But um, what I wanted it to look like was a haunted spirit uh, lost amongst the cluttered nook in an old house. Um, so to bring out that haunting feeling of being uh, forgotten and... Um, just in a, in a myriad of objects. It's it's a very unique fear. Um, so my process, I set up the tripod. This one took also a lot of work. This one was like, like an hour of setup, just because of how many times I had to turn on the camera, run to the spot, pose, and then I held it there for like a really long exposure time because I wanted to have it capture just a little bit of wiggle. Um, now that I think about it, I probably could have shown the exposure time, but, um, yeah, I made it ghosty, and then in post-production, I edited my arms to be more faded, so that, um, it was a little bit more disconnected, and it was pretty spooky. Um, yeah. So what else being afraid? This was pretty straightforward. Um, I wanted to do a picture of someone looking afraid. And this is the example by Jasper Garu, and then this is mine. Um, so this one was another timed one um, where I had to pose, and I really took in some acting um, skills for this one. I it was kind of not method acting; I didn't actually scare myself, but I thought it would be more authentic to do 
um, just the eyes and not have the mouth open. Um, and I tinted the image to be bluer and increased the texture and clarity so that there was a little bit too much information you can see, like my, the pores on my face. So yeah, uh, camera settings. I wanted to try making a ghost like they do in the Victoria times because of the long exposure. And so I stood for or sat on the couch for a minute and left for the remaining of the exposure time. And I made it look like a ghost. And there's the uh, Mickey Mouse pillow again. Makes another comeback. Um, I set up the timer and... Uh, I think most of the work was in post-production. I desaturated the image, um, turned out the orange lighting, just to make it just a little bit creepier, and also to show that camera settings really do matter. These are my sources for the information, and thank you so much for watching, and I hope you like my final.